Welcome to Psychology Ninjas. We're back here today looking at a contemporary study from cognitive psychology. We need to be aware that when we're talking about contemporary studies, there is optional content here and you only need to do one of these studies. We're going to take you through Sebastian and Hernandez Gill. Okay, so with this, we're on a study and therefore we need to have key specific details about the aim, procedure, findings and conclusions for that study. So, Sebastian and Hernandez Gill then. Key thing with this is we're focusing here on the aim of looking at how digit span increases with age and therefore we could use this in a developmental psychology question. Also, main comparison is Spanish school children with Anglo-Saxon children. Now, although this study did have an element that looked at dementia patients, and you'll see that here from the findings, the focus of this study is about children and their development. So within our procedure, then we want to be focusing in on the fact that this is a field experiment and the children were examined at school at break time. We can give some specifics here in terms of the number of children who were um, examined and that they were all from Madrid. Equally, the technique that we're using here is the digit span technique, where one digit is added each time in order for a person to recall that backwards. It was the longest sequence without an error in the two out of three presentations. So the children were given the sequence of numbers um, three different times. And if they got two out of three correct, then that would be um, counted as correct and added to their average. We can see here that we're using a measure of central tendency, the mean, in order to record these results. There are more permutations on this, but three is fine. And we've selected five years old, 11 years old and 17. We could make a comparison here to the dementia patients and those with frontal variant frontotemporal dementia. But we want to be really careful here because this is not the focus of our study or its aim. The conclusions here again can be about the impact of developmental psychology and that we can also include the key concept of the word length effect that when we're talking about Spanish language the way we say those words are longer and that had an impact on recall. So how are we going to evaluate? Well we're going to use grave because this is a study. So again we want to think about having arguments and counter arguments here. We want to be careful here in terms of talking about our um, dementia patients, but we can see here that we've got, we might be talking about type 1 errors. The fact that we've got a false positive because this is a small sample. We want to be making many conclusions throughout. And here we could talk about generalizability, that this is positive in terms of the aim for developmental psychology and talking about a comparison between Anglo-Saxon and Spanish children. But we want to be more careful about the other parts of this study. OK, so how would we interweave this all together? Having a little bit of our explanation followed by our evaluation. Well, we'd start by giving the aim of the study and we can have that as our introductory paragraph, but still getting us marks. Then we're going to move in to talk about the participants, 575 Spanish students all from Madrid. And our state here is to say that the participant variables, the differences between those participants were taken into account because of the exclusion of individuals. OK, then we've got a large sample of children that were all born in Spain and they were natural Spanish speakers, which was important. Coming to an overall conclusion about the generalizability. Then we're going to move into our procedure and we can talk about the standardized nature of the procedure. We want to be careful here because this is true for lots of different pieces of research. We want to be cautious here because a standardised procedure could be used for lots of different pieces of research. If we're talking about the fact that this is linked into this piece of research by the digit span technique as a consistent memory for recording um, individuals' memory. We can further elaborate by that by the fact that the digit spans were read at a consistent rate. And all of this is talking about the internal reliability of that study. Then we're going to move in and talk about a finding um, related to age. And this has application to the real world, giving it external validity in terms of our mini conclusion. And we can raise awareness of how this might correlate with other um, cognitive abilities, making different changes for our teaching practices. 
On the flip side of this, we want to give in a counter argument that actually recall of digits lacks mundane realism, that the task itself is not realistic to the real world and memory is can be talked about in lots of different um, capacities and therefore is only testing one different type of memory. We're going to move on here to validity and we might drop the finding comparing to the dementia patients, especially if we're running out of time. Here we're going to talk about a lack of control leading to a problem with the accuracy of the data. The fact that the information about ch children was only collated from parents might mean a subjective experience and that they might be worried about telling us something about their children for fear of, of the impact of that. Again, we're going to counteract that, having our argument and counter argument, talking about high levels of ecological validity because the children were tested in schools. We're going to have a mini conclusion here talking about the confounding variables, not only in the non-disclosure of children's additional needs, but the fact that it was in a familiar environment might have meant more distractions for the participants. Finally, we're going to talk about some conclusions, talking about how this was an ethically sound piece of research. Again, we want to give arguments and counter arguments here, and you can see we've got some ideas on screen. So how might this link all in together in terms of some exam questions? Well, here we've got a four mark explain question. This is asking us to give a bit more detail and some examples in order to explain our findings. Because this has findings here, we want to have a specific numerical data from this study. OK, let's have another look at an exam question. Here we've got the command word evaluate. We know that in Edexcel, this is a little bit sneaky in that we need to explain our chosen contemporary study, but also evaluate it. We need to evaluate it just in terms of reliability and validity. So some parts of our elements of grave are not going to be relevant. We want to have balance between our explanation and our evaluation, giving both four marks each. Thanks for joining us today here at Psychology Ninjas. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell. See you next time.